Okay. We're on top. Kat Zainam at Aleph. Tonight is a very, uh, last week, and I hope this week also, has great applicability, uh, not only for Rosh Hashanah, but also tonight we'll learn something about uh, tefillah that uh, maybe has uh, relevance uh, on an ongoing basis about a question that this Gemara raises. So to review, the Mishnah we saw last time, four times in the year, uh, is the world judged, or different aspects of the world are judged, right? Uh, and, and those are, we had uh, the, the Shalish Regalim and Rosh Hashanah. And the first part of the Gemara was trying to understand how is Tavua judged? Is Tavua judged once a year and its fiscal year, so to speak, is Pesach? Well, what about what's standing in the field already? Is that already was judged before and whatever happens, happens? Or is it judged a second time? The essential conclusion of the Gemara was it's judged a second time. Whatever was not yet planted is judged Pesach, what's coming. But then whatever's in the field, if it's still standing in the field and it wasn't harvested before Pesach, which in many cases it would not be, then when you do harvest it, whenever that will be, so it judges second time of the new Pesach. I'm page 16a. Uh, there was a, a statement. Um, that's really a prat, I guess, but um, okay. But it, it, tre, tre uh, mitina. It, it's it's judged twice. That's the main thing you need to know uh, when it comes to tvua, right? Because depending on when you plant things, that's when it'll grow, but then you don't necessarily harvest it until it's passed through the the, the demarcating line of the next Pesach. So the Gemara was asking, and the Gemara answered. Then the Gemara said, and that's what we're up to for tonight, um, who exactly does our Mishnah follow? None of the named people who are in the in the uh, the Tanayim, who are cited here in the Gemara, uh, dovetail with the Mishnah. Uh, you have to jam it in and reinterpret the Mishnah in some way, and they don't seem to fit. And the Gemara was essentially stymied by this and had to come up with Another answer, which was that it's none of these Tanaim. It's another Tana we hadn't thought of before, and rather his academy, Tana Devei Rabbi Shma. That's what we saw last time. Uh, we should probably close that second part because it's going to lead into what we're talking about tonight. Uh, so this is a little bit of a review, but it'll sort of set the stage for the next uh, the next part. So if you look at, at the Gemara, I am uh, approximately, what is it? About a third of the way, uh, uh, almost halfway down the narrow lines. Uh, um, matnitin. The first word on the line is matni matnitin. It's the first word on the right hand margin. So the word before it and the last line mani matnitin. Who does the Mishnah follow? Lo Rabbi Meir, Lo Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yosi, Lo Rabbi Natan. How come? The Tanya, as we learned, as follows: Hakol nidan Rosh Hashanah ukzardin shalem nechtam biyom Kippurim di Rabbi Meir. Everybody and everything is judged on Rosh Hashanah and it's zardin is in Yom Kippur. Everything. Well, that's not what the Mishnah says. So it's not. That's not it. By the by, the Mishnah is a Stam Mishnah, which is why this is curious. It doesn't specify, but Hakol here sounds like it means Hakol. Hakol. Everything. Not just every one humans, but everything. And there, and that's not according to the Mishnah, because the Mishnah has different moments. Yeah. Uh Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Hakol Nidan Rosh Hashanah, Ugzardin Shalahem, Nechtam Koach Vech Bizmano. So that syntax tells you retroactively, that what Rabbi Meir said clearly meant everything. The the wheat, the, the fruits, the water, yeah? How do I know? Because Rabbi Yehuda then says, everything is judged in Rosh Hashanah, but the Gzardin is on its specific day. Rabbi Yehuda adds, Now that sounds pretty close, except for the problem that in the Mishnah, it didn't mention Yom Kippur as the Gzardin day of the of the human beings. It didn't mention Gzardin. It just said Ha'olam Nidon. According to Rabbi Yehuda, everything is going to be judged in Rosh Hashanah, but human beings will have their Gzardin on Yom Kippur, and the other elements within nature will have their Gzardin their aseret yimei tshuva is really months and months long till the following Pesach, the following Shavuot, the following Sukkot. Yeah, but that's not what the Mishnah said because the Mishnah mentioned Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot, and in between Rosh Hashanah, and it said Haulam Nidon. It gave you the four different times. So we realized that the assumption of the Gemara is there are two phases in Din. There's the judgment, and then there's the decree. The two separate things for humans, we call that ketiva v'chatima. It's written, it's it's sealed, right? Which of course is imagery. 
כמובן, כמובן. Right? Wait, I'm, I'm confused. The, the Mishnah says, בארבע פרקים העולם נידון. It's judged. It's judged. So what does judged mean? End, end of the judgment? If it's the end of the judgment, how could human beings be judged? End of the judgment on Rosh Hashanah. We know Yom Kippur is coming. Right. So what does it mean? That's the question the Gemara is basically uh, contending with. And uh, do, we, do we mean to say, according to Rabbi Yehuda, really everything's judged Rosh Hashanah, but the Gzar Din comes at a particular time. Well, it doesn't match with the Mishnah. So he's not, you understand why it doesn't match? Because if it matched with him, it would have said, B'Yom uh, Kippurim. It's going to be the Xardin for human beings. It doesn't say that. It's the Rosh Hashanah column over in Lufanov. Give me Mark. You either have to retranslate Nidon. Yes. Yeah. Or you have to say that it's talking about something else. Right. But Rabbi Yehuda thinks that Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot are the end point right. of judgment for right. these three elements. Tua, be, uh, 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 Peirot, and, 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 and Mai. Defining Nidon as the actual yeah. ceiling. Of yeah, the, of and that's really what they're trying to do is sort of right. figure out, okay, what, what does it mean? I mean Rabbi Yosei Omer, we saw this last time, Adam Nidon B'choyom, Shnemar, Retif Kedanu Lebekarim. Yeah, you, you, you will remember him, but in the sense of being held to account, like um, like a Tafkid or like a um, Mifkad. It's, a, an, it's not just counting, but it's a task or an accounting. They're, they're related, yeah? So, so, yeah, okay. Now, that's both of those I mentioned that we saw last time. They're both from the same Pasuk, the beginning of the Pasuk, the end of the Pasuk. In Eov, being quoted. So, Rabbi Yehuda, he, if you want to say it's Rabbi Yehuda, who really follows closest to Rabbi Yehuda, exactly the question we just talked about before, but the Gemara now says it explicitly, what about human beings? Human beings, I should say, they're Nidon, because it's the end of Din. So, I'm a Rava, hi, Tana Debei, Rabbi Yishmael, it's from the Academy of Rabbi Yishmael, the Tana Debei, the Tana Debei, Rabbi Yishmael, Barba Prakim Olam Nidon, the Pesach Alatvua, Batzeret Alperet Ilan, Bechad Nidon Olamayim, the Adam Nidon Rosh Hashanah, Ugzar Din Shelo, Nechtem and Kippurim, Bechikat Tane, Matnitin, Atchilat Din. When the Mishnah referred to Din, it meant the beginning of judgment, not the end of judgment, at least for human beings. Yeah? Question for everything else. Or is the Gzar, because uh, the other elements of the world, as it were, are fixed, they're part of nature, they themselves are not dynamic. When we say that the wheat is being judged, the, 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 the crop is being judged, we say the fruits, we don't literally mean that they're going before the Kisei HaKavod. It means what's going to happen to them based on the comportment of humanity. Come move on. Hashem's not judging the water based on the water's behavior. This is a free will. It's not, it's just the human beings being judged with regard to the following three things. You'll ask me, but I thought you just said human beings are being judged on Rosh Hashanah. So shouldn't it be everything related to human beings? The mission is teaching that actually not everything about human beings is judged in, in, uh, entirely on Rosh Hashanah. Who held that way, though? Rabbi Meir held that way. Akoli done Rosh Hashanah. That's what he meant. But the Xardin for each thing would be later on. There's a certain logic there. Uh, but the, the way the Gemara concludes here is basically to say, um, like Ten of Rabbi Shmuel, when it comes to human beings, the, Xar, the, 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 the beginning of Din is Rosh Hashanah. The end, the Khatima, here called the Xardin, right, is on Yom Kippurim. So we have the Aseret Yimei Tshuva. Things are held in abeyance. The script is, uh, the judgment's written, but it can be changed. Sarah Yimei Tshuva. As opposed to the other elements, Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot, Tua, Peirot, Mayim, respectively, they're, they just have that one, their moment. Now, it's not their moment, it's really human beings' relationship to them moment. You understand? Is there a reconciliation? We're coming to it, to try to understand it, because obviously these are other opinions that are out there. Pick up what Mark said. Well, let's get there. Um, other questions? Yeah, Mark, yeah. please. So, At this point, Mark, one second. Just finish the thought. It could mean done as, in, has a different meaning. Yeah. Well, that's the implication. It seems to be part of the implication here, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what does need done? Yeah, please. I didn't, I didn't hear Larry, but I was going to just ask, can you have need on for things that are not human without having human first? Meaning, does it make sense? Can you have a nidon for a road 
מן הסתם, for humans. Right. But it doesn't seem like there's a gap But according to this view. There's no gap. You have the judgment for non-human things until you had the judgment. Is there a judgment for weed until you've judged humanity? Hmm. Because if well, I guess it goes in a circle, but it starts with humanity in Rosh Hashanah, right? It's the beginning right. of the year. But it, but it took, when, I, when I'm trying to reconcile, you don't in my mind, right? If you're saying, well, the, you know, these things are judged on, or everything's judged on Rosh Hashanah. But we haven't had a Gezerah deen for us. How do they get judged? Because that you can't, you have to have us, based on this interpretation, mm -hmm. you have to have Adam involved. Proceed. Right. Well, we have to be preceded, which means we have to have a Gezerah, which means we really have to be a young Kipper until you can begin to. Okay, to okay, judgment. okay. Fair fair point. Which, of course, begs the question why is the mission in the order of Pesach, Shavuot, or Shoshana, and Sukkot? I have to look into that. I don't know. I, that's a great, great question. Okay. No, no, it's, it's a great question. I mean, it goes in the order of Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot, because that's uh, when you went back over here and talked to Regalim, so Nisan was the first one. So it started from Nisan here also. So that's a, that's maybe a technical answer, the best it can come up with. But fundamentally, yeah, it sounds like the human beings have to be judged before you get to everything else. Otherwise, like on what basis is their judgment? What does the judgment mean? We're judging humanity to have a crappy crop. And yet you get to the crop time and they're like, well, okay, now you're... So if the people did tshuva, it sounds like then the crop, well, then there would be a better judgment at a different right. time. So it has to be integrated. Yeah, 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 right. Right, right, right. Look, in the end, this whole thing very mysterious to us, obviously, okay. but we know that that we, we we see that there's an accountability. By the by, Sukkot, there's a tefillah for Geshem. And Pesach, the tefillah for Tal, really is about the Tal that's falling on the crop and that will when we get to the, to the, the time for planting, right? Because you're going to the season of it. Now in Sukkot, on Shavuot, I mean, we don't seem to have a tefillah per se, right? It's interesting. There isn't like a its own its own tefillah. What? Akdama. Wow. If you understand it, you could you could explain it to me. I don't know. I'm also bleary eyed when they read it. There is an English translation. What? Shavuot is one. No, but yeah, well, that's going to Ramban as a shita. But my point is, there isn't a tefillah for Peirot. Ba'atzeret idonim. Ba'atzeret al ha Peirot al Peirot ha'ilan. But we don't actually have a, a special tefillah for that in the liturgy, which is just interesting. So if you're being judged, you would think you have to do something. You know, they, all the minhagim are bringing fruits, the the, the, the trees into the into the shul, uh, right? The different things, right? So, um, yeah, all right. So these are these are all good questions. I don't I don't necessarily have a good uh, good answer as to how the mechanism works. This this is what we know. So this is the received tradition, right? So. So we had the Rabbi Shmuel second line up in the narrow lines. Amar Rav Chizda, my time at the Rabbi Yosi. Did he come at time? But he's carrying a little karim. So Anan Achi Kamrinan, my time lo Amar ki Rabbi Natan. Rabbi Rav Chizda has to clarify his question because he says, "What's the rationale of Rabbi Yosi's?" The Gemara says, "What do you mean?" He told you his reason. His reason is the pasuk says, "Tivk Karenu, but Tivk Kedenu la bekarim." So he answers, "No, Anan Achi Kamrinan." No, no. What I, what I meant to say is, my time lo Amar ki Rabbi Natan. Right, uh, 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 because Rabbi Natan, who says it's every hour, he he says uh, he had another uh, statement. Right, tivke uh, tivchanenu liragaim. So uh, it sounds like it's every every liragaim tivchanenu. I mean, it's every second, right? So bechina iyuni baalmahi. No, so bechina is not really like a bechina, like a bechina, like a test, livchon, but uh, it just means investigation. So the Gemara says, Pekita nami, yeah, but you could also say Pekita means also calling someone to account. Doesn't mean they're being judged. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi really has another pasuk that he relies upon. We did see this last time as well. Lasot mishpat avdo mishpat amo Yisrael dvaryom biyomo. And the fact is, dvaryom biyomo uh, to do the judgment of his servant. <coughs> the servant here, by the way, means the king himself. And the, the judgment of his nation, Israel, uh, each matter uh, on its on its uh, appointed uh, day. This is an associative principle, since I quoted this pasuk, and Rav Chizda was involved. Rav Chizda tells you, by the way, we also have something else in this pasuk, which is when a king and the, and, a, and, the, and the community are being judged, the Jewish people, so the king goes in first. Shnamar lasot mishpat avdo. Right to do the the judgment of his uh, servant, right? The hadar that word is missing, but Bach adds it in. 
Umishpat Amo Yisrael. My time, what's the reason for this? Possible reason. Ma'ibayit Ema. Lav Urach Ara, Lamate of Malka, Abroi. That's not uh, it's not appropriate. It's like not Derek Harris. The king is sitting outside of the court and the, the subjects are being uh, are being judged. Bibait Ema, Mikme the Lefush Haran Af. Uh, uh, the, the the issue might have to do with 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 uh, with anger, and uh, it's questionable what it means. It has to do with anger. What anger are we talking about? Are we saying that the king is spared the anger because the, there's a higher chance that the that the Rebbeinu Sha'olam is upset, as it were, with the nation and with the king, and therefore he spared that by waiting to go in after them, or is it possible that um, that 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 the king is responsible for everyone? And therefore bears the responsibility and the brunt of the judgment before everyone. So a little bit, uh, a little bit ambiguous to me which one, uh, which one it uh, is it, referring to. Amar, uh, so Amar of Yosef, the, you know, the, the Gemara picks up again and asks the following question based on what we've just read a moment ago. Kiman Matslin Haidna Akitsire Amri. Who are we davening like now for the Kitsire and the Amri? Look at Rashi to understand what that is. He has to tell us that it's based on the Gemara and Adarim. Mefarish Masech and Adarim. Ketzirei are cholim. Meri are Talmid Chachamim. Shein Teshushe Koach. The Talmid Chachamim are weakened by all the learning that they do. They're wearied. So when we daven for them, the sick people and the Talmid Chachamim, according to which of the opinions that we saw just now are we following? Meaning, if you're judged once a year in Rosh Hashanah, so the judgment happened already a few months ago. So what are you davening for a chola? If the Chachamim are weary from their learning, what are you davening now? Rosh Hashanah already came and went. So the uh, the question is posed. The Gemara says, "Come on, Rabbi Yossi, the Ebayit Ema." So it sounds like it's Rabbi Yossi. How come Rabbi Yossi says, "I don't accept"? Right, I don't accept that the judgment is an annual judgment. Really, judgment is every day. So therefore, you could daven every day for, for Cholim, because it's a new day. We judge differently. Uh, right. It could be like Rabbanan. It could be like Rabbanan, namely, Rabbanan meaning here, like the Mishnah. It's appropriate for a person to cry out for mercy, whether it's before or whether it's after. Kirabi Yossi, look at Rashi. Kirabi Yossi. Well, they can sue Mita. Yikirabanim de Amri, a Nidon El Broshoshana, Hare Karnik the Salav, Yavre have the Knas, right? But then Rabbi Rav, uh, Rav Yitzchak comes, and Rabbi Yitzchak says, Yeah, but you could cry out anytime. When you cry out, it's good, even after the Xardin. You could change it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't understand this. Unless someone is. Right. According to it sounds on the face of it, like you better get all your tefillas in once a year, because whatever's gonna happen after that, it's been decreed. Who lives, who dies, who's rich, who's poor, it's too late. So no point in davening after that. That's what it sounds like. That's the Gemara's querying. How could that be? So answer number one, if you follow Rabbi Yossi, so every day is a new day. If you follow Rabbanan, that it is an annual system, okay, but even so, there's still a possibility of Tza'aka even after Gemar Din. But that assumes that Tza'aka is for what was past. Yeah. But there's, so see, there's Tza'aka for things future, means because the judgment wasn't rendered on Rosh Hashanah. So all of uh, Tammuz, Av, Elul, Yudavin, comes to Rosh Hashanah, Yudavin, but then there's a judgment. Now, but we know you can daven still Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur because it's not sealed. But after it's sealed, how could you keep davening? Rafainu Hashem v'nei Rafe, uh, davening uh, whatever you're going to daven for. Shemayat filah. It's too late. It was uh, already decreed. Answer, Yafet Se'aka. Even after Xardin, you could still daven. It's not too late. You ask me, so then why should it be Xardin? The answer is, it seems to be more difficult. The easiest time. The Rambam writes this, right? That, that, that you could always... Do tshuva, but the best time to do it uh, is uh, b- between Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. That's the time. Wait, I write his hand up. Can I give him? No, but based on what, um, actually based on what Larry's saying, then in terms of the the, the Rosh Hashanah that passed and, and the Rosh Hashanah that that's you know the, the yeah future. Okay. Abalei l'tova. Abalei l'tova. 
But we say very often that it's really sealed at Hoshana Rabba. So that's already another layer. What does it mean it's really sealed? It's really sealed on Yom Kippur. Right. So it's sealed on Yom Kippur. But you still have until. But until, until Hoshana Rabba, if I was saying it in a sacrilegious way, I would say there's still an afterburner. Afterburner. Okay. In other words, it's already taken off as an afterburner. You could still grab the contrails, if you will, of the Xardin. And if you daven the right way, besimcha, the two levav, and with se'aka, ana shemoshiana, it still could be overturned. But the real time of the, of the Xar din is Yom Kippur. We do consider Hoshan Rabbah a day of din. It's the, the end of the end. A good kvittal means should be a good note. But there were, that's already, we're getting into mystical kinds of okay. things. We live by it. I'm not saying we don't. But don't overturn, like, don't uh, don't put uh, put the cart before the, like, don't don't decide, well, you know, Shana Rabbah is more important than Yom Kippur because it's the end of the end. It's not. Yom Kippur is the headquarters. But after that, there's still a possibility, maybe, maybe, to get it in, exactly. you know, after after that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, go ahead. Understand. It's the end of Tishrei. The person is still alive, and he did something wrong between Yom Kippur and Hanukkah. God forbid. That's it. Okay. Present company. Yeah. Did something wrong. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to do tshuva, and he cries out to Hashem. Okay. Rahman. Okay. But he also says, do tshuva. Yeah, I said that. He's doing... Okay, he okay, okay. Part of that, he calls Rahman. He's doing what he needs. Yeah. Is it possible to overturn Xera? It's possible. But why... The, your, your answer implies everything is retroactive. No, not everything is retroactive. What's retroactive, again, it's very hard to understand these issues. We're going to see Tosso right now. It'll maybe fill out the picture a little more. But it is confusing, right? If the Xardin, God forbid that someone was going to get sick, was already in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, so they got sick around, let's say, Sukkot's time, and they say, oh, it's the Xardin that came upon me, but I could still daven. You could still daven for Rufua, right? You, if the person did something wrong uh, just after Hanukkah, they say, oh my goodness, they did the wrong thing. They do tshuva. So is the Xardin right down to the Kodesh Rabbi Yossi? Yeah, because every day they're being judged. But maybe it's not every day. Maybe what's really happening is it's at a later time. What's that mean? The next Rosh Hashanah, they're going to have an opportunity to do tshuva, or they'll get exardine based on having been judged for the year past, and they didn't make redress for it. The other side of that coin is, uh, if someone gets sick, or if something untoward befalls the person, Khalilan, but yeah. how does he know that's with respect to exardine of, of the Tishrei yeah. Doesn't know. Shavar, or in the current year? Doesn't know. That's what's wrong. Yev Shaladad, Mir Choladad. Our, our our assumption seems to be that the Xar Din, it seems to be, is Rosh Hashanah the Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur, that's the Khatima Hadin. That's why it's such a momentous day. And I would I would accept that with respect to events, with respect to behaviors that occurred even up until Yom Kippur. Okay. But after Yom Kippur. So it's kind of staggered, right? Because on Rosh Hashanah, between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. You could change the Xardine that you had on Rosh Hashanah until Yom Kippur. Then it's sealed. It doesn't seal doesn't mean it's impossible to change, by the way, in any direction. It's just harder to change. But if someone would tell me, oh, so and so passed away, they did a terrible sin, and then they passed away. First of all, I'm not God's accountant, so we're going to tread, never mind tread carefully. We won't even tread in the world of trying to, you know, unpack who's this and who's that with being God's accountant. But I don't put it past the Rebona Shalom that it's possible that someone got Xardine in the middle of the year. I don't know. Rabbi Yossi certainly thought so. He thought it was every day. Rabbi Yossi thought it was every single hour. Yeah, yeah, that is so what it means. That, you know, so yeah, that so is what it means. But the sense. point is that the person does tshuva, then they overturn, they can overturn the dean. They can dive into Hashem. Now, they don't know what's coming necessarily, but let's say God forbid they get sick. So it doesn't mean you don't stop dying. That's Tosfos' beginning question. Don't the Rabbanan think you daven every day, Rafain Hashem Vene Rafay? Don't they say every day you're going to daven a birkat Hashanim? Well, it was already taken care of. What are you mouthing the words for no good reason? Clearly, there's some reason they think you should daven that. They wrote the Anshikan Sedekdola, wrote the Amida. So if they're the ones who hold Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and it's all done, that's Tosfos' question. That's Tosfos' we're going to open right now with the time remaining 18 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So I get all that. That part actually feels good to me, this concept that there's a need on that's, you know, an annual physical, and then, you know, you have, but you also have the ability to correct things during the year and, and, and do, do tshuva and all that. 
where I'm getting a little bit confused with Rabbi Yossi, who says that this Nidon in the mission is talking about the day-to-day. -day. So, hmm? right, that's weird to me because it actually doesn't say that. It says, but hey, so. And, uh, Rabbi Yossi, so, so here's what you're missing in the picture. Rabbi Yossi is a Tana. Rabbi Yehuda Nasi wrote this. It's after Rabbi Yossi. So Rabbi Yehuda Nasi wrote this. The Gemara is wondering, why didn't Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, if he knew there was a Tana who holds his day by day, why didn't he put that in the mission? He didn't pask in that way. How come? Majority opinion follows Rabbi Yishmael. The Academy of Rabbi Yishmael. Again, there's different Limudim, whether it's, we don't know. Is it because they had different Limudim of what they got from the Rebbe, and it goes to Harsinas, is different ideas. In the case of Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Natan, if you notice, they darshan psukim, or a pasuk. Whether that pasuk is the same pasuk can say for Eov, or whether that pasuk is from Malachim Aleph. So why did they do that? You don't need a pasuk, just say my Rabbi said. Yeah. Unless you're going to the psukim and you're saying, oh no, actually, look at this pasuk. That's telling me the secret is there because uh, uh, Malachim Aleph, Eov, it's all part of the world of Tanakh. By the way, you could argue that uh, more powerful the world of the VM than the world of Ketuvim, maybe. 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 That's a maybe, by the way, in terms of its legislative uh, 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 punch. But but I don't know that's going to take us far afield. Let's see Tosfo. Let's see what it, it Tosfo plays out this a lot of this issue. We had the discussion. Let's see it in Savim Tomar the Rabbanon. Nami. Mila Matslina Rafainu Birkat Hashanin. Don't they say that? Ve'od. And, and further along, again, the Bach. Right? Ve'od. Ha Rabbi Yehuda. That, that same Rabbi Yehuda who is quoted here as saying that a person, a, man, a human being is judged in Rosh Hashanah and the Gzadin is going to be in Rosh Kippur, Ha'amar Per Kamed to Shabbat, page 12b in Masachat Shabbat, Ha'nech Nesvaker Ha'chola, Omer Ha'makom Yirachem Alacha, Va'al Chole Amo Yisrael. Why is Rabbi Yehuda bothering? You should tell the fellow... I'd love to daven for you, but you have to wait till next Rosh Hashanah. If you survive to next Rosh Hashanah, I'll daven before next Rosh Hashanah. You should have a good sardine. He didn't say that. He davened it for the person right then and there. Hamakam Yerachem Alechav Al Cholei Amo Yisrael. So clearly, he thought that you could change it in midstream. Follow now. Ve'omer Rabbeinu Tam Dishlo Yitle Dishlo Yachle. Excuse me. That that he shouldn't get sick. What about that that prayer? If you want, if someone's going to pray, it's so and so shouldn't get sick. Vada lo matlinan. For sure, you can't dive in that because the anxiety happens. So, Ella le Rabbi Yossi, right? According to Rabbi Yossi, you could because the judgment hasn't happened yet. Today, tomorrow, the next day, every day. I shouldn't get sick today because today's going to be another anxiety. Aval she drape matlinan aliba de kule alma. So the answer that Tosva gives is um, what, what, to, to daven that someone could get better, that you can daven anytime. How come? Because the Xardine is whether a person will get sick. But how soon they'll get better? That's what Tfil is for. Go faster. It's an appeal. It's an appeal. You don't buy it? No, no, well, no, those would sort of bought it because they're going to have other answers. When there are multiple answers, pretty much you can bet it's because they didn't like one of the other answers for some reason. But I don't, I don't find it such a terrible answer. I think it's a nice answer. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we're diving for what happened in the past months. Okay. And for what might happen in the future months. Yeah. That's before Rosh Hashanah. But if you're in the middle of the year and the Xardin came already in Rosh Hashanah, and it, or the, the Din was Rosh Hashanah, and the Khatima and Hadin, also called the Xardin, happened on Yom Kippurim. So now it's already we're holding by Hanukkah, so a person will get sick. So the, the toast would say, one answer, Rabbi Tam says, you can't daven according to the Rabbanon not to get sick, but you could daven according to the Rabbanon that if a person got sick, that they should get better. How come? Because the Xardin is whether they're going to get sick. It's not how soon they'll get better. Larry registered his disapproval. He doesn't like it. Yeah. That's fine, because that tells what goes on. You don't like it. There's other ideas. Yeah? Okay. You don't like it either? No. Okay. There's two people don't like it. Okay. Mark doesn't like it either. Let the record show. The issue is, okay. The Gazardin has two pieces to it. Huh? The has two pieces to it. Meaning? One, you shouldn't get sick. Yeah, and if you do, are you going to get better? Get well. Yeah. Talk it. It's a question. So uh, the Gemara goes, the Tosu goes on here. For Amavarish, I know there. Minimavushal, what? 
No, no, no. But but the point is, we don't really know. Tosfut doesn't really know. Trying to figure out the mechanism. How does this work? Clearly, Chazal thought you should daven for sick people. So, so if I'm a Beresh, I know they're minimum bushel, that one of the Prakim in the Darim, Ahachter of Yosef, Kitsire, Kitsire, Mamash, Mari, Rabbana. Kitsire means people who are ill. In one of the footnotes that I saw in the Masif de Gemara, it's like Kitsire means they're sick, means they have Kotzer Ruach. It's hard for them to breathe or to even. Maybe from a mental perspective, they feel at uh, uh, ill at ease because of the illness that they that they suffer with. Vahashta matzlinan akatsiri sheet rapu. And nowadays we do daven for the katsire, the chol, and they should get well, right? We do. Yeah. Uh um, and it should be Ladivre Hak according to the, the Bach, nearby I perish, Ladivre Hakol, yeah, Ladivre Hakol, right? Umari Hain Rabanan, Shalyachlu. Uh, when Marie means the Rabbanan, the 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 Chachamim, that you shouldn't get sick, uh, that that we can that we can do, uh, 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 meaning according to Rabbi Yosi. As we're going to see further along, that you, what about Daven Birkat Hashanim? It's the middle of the year. It's the Hashanim. It already happened Rosh Hashanah, my friends, or it's already happened at the time of Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot. So she in Pasuk Gesham Muatin, she oridem hamakom bismanan. If the Hashem if the psak about Geshem on Sukkot was that there's going to be very little rainfall, at least you could daven may it fall at the right time that it should be as good a crop as it could be. Ve'od Yeshlomar, Ve'od Yeshlomar means another answer for you who may not have appreciated the beginning answer. The tefillah de rabim shiny. The prayer of the of the community is different. The gzar dinam nikra, because the gzera against a community is torn up whenever the community davens together. Or has a higher chance of it. I don't want to say whenever, but... How is it known? Right? Kid as we'll see later on in the Gemara. V'hoi, the Shabbat, Rabbi Yehuda Nami, Yesh Yosef, Kehai Gavna. The Dami L'Rabim, the Halamat Bahadei Al Kol Cholim. Look carefully back at the words Rabbi Yehuda used. He would go to a person, according to that Gemara, Masachat Shabbat and Dafi Bet, he would say to the person... He was standing in front of a sick person and would say, Those extra words, Yisrael, connects the individual to the tzibur, and it means that I, as an individual who's davening, when I say, Yisrael, means that I'm elevating that individual to a class of people who are in need, and that extension, according to Tosaf at least, is that my tefillah, this is based on Rashi, by the way, there in the Gemara, Tos, essentially quoting Rashi from that, that Gemara, I'm davening essentially what? That I'm representing the whole Jewish people when I say this tefillah. So it's a tefillah of the rabbi, even though I'm one individual. To, 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 to reconcile the idea. Yeah? Okay. And that's what you say, by the way, in the plural. Right? And also, some aspect of this we can't change. It was already set at the time that it was set. But maybe some other element of this we can, we, we still have some uh, some input into. Yeah? So you see Tosfot also struggling, trying to understand how the tefillahs work. And we're also all struggling. We're trying to figure out how the tefillahs work. And the re reality is, as uh, the Rav said in one of his uh, lectures, I had like an audio tape, a cassette. Everyone here knows what that is, an audio cassette. There's an audio cassette. I had one uh, bootleg of, of uh, the Rav, uh, an audio tape. I don't have a cassette player anymore, so who knows where it is, where he said something to the effect that, you know, we, we really don't understand the mechanism of how tefillah works. It's not a mechanism. That's the problem. We have a mitzvah, we daven, we beseech the Rebona Sha'olam, but uh, someone's going to tell you guarantees, someone's going to give you. So uh, that's, 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 uh, that's, that's uh, farther, uh, farther afield uh, for, uh, for most of us. Um, okay. So, um, okay. We have a few more minutes. I know you got to go. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll you catch the, the recording. So back, back, back now to the, uh, to the Gemara. Uh, I'm uh, about uh, what? 10 lines or so into the wide lines for the end of the line. Amr uh, Tanya, Amr Rabbi Yehuda, Mishum Rabbi Akiva, Mipnei Ma Amr Torah Viu Omer BePesach, Mipnei Shah Pesach Zman Tvua Shabesadot, Mipnei Ma Amr Torah Viu Shtei Halach BeAtzeret, Mipnei Shah Atzeret Zman Peirut Ha'Ilan. Who? Sorry, Amr Kadosh Baruch Viu Lufanai Shtei Halach BeAtzeret Kidei Shid Baruch Lachem Peirut Ha'Ilan. So, in other words, not like I was saying that there's a tefila for Tal and a tefila for Gashem, but rather. There's a mitzvah, or a korban rather, which is itself a prayerful act, and each yomtiv associated with whatever is being nidon. 
And the third one, we've named Ma'am Rator Nisku Mayim Bechag, and we're Kosh Baruchu Nisku Lafana Mayim Bechag, Teshid Baruchem Gishme Shana. Right? You can pour the water libation, that will bring an element of Bracha. We don't have that, so instead we have the Tfilat Yashim because it's the best we can do. The Amru, the Imru Lafana, Brosh Shana, Malchiot, Zichorot, Beshofarot. We're very familiar with this. Say these three things in the Musaf. Malchiot Kadesh, Tamil Khun. By the way, it doesn't say Musaf here. It's Machloket. And among the Rishonim, uh, there was a Tzad, the, the Balamor, I believe it was, wanted to argue that maybe on all the Shmanas rays of Rosh Hashanah, you should say the nine brachas every time. Very unpopular shita, but there's an idea like that. We don't pass that. Yeah. So, Malchir Kadesh Tamli Chuni Aleichem, to king me over you, except that God is the, 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 is the judge, the king, etc. Zichronot Kadesh Yal Zichonechem Lefan Latova. You should uh, mention Zichronot so that your remembrance will come before me for the good. I.e., advocacy. What zecher is that? Uva me ba shofar, right? With the shofar, shofar representing the akeda, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, the akeda and the substitution of the ram for Yitzchak Avinu. There's a little question here, isn't there? I'm going to give the korban a omer, which is a crop, as the offering. So be just favorably on the crop, the water, the water. But the one that doesn't match, of course, is shavuot, because the parod ha'ilan. Which it is the time of Bikurim, but oddly enough, it says to bring two loaves of bread, which is made from the crop again. Look at Rashi. Shtei alechem. Yeratsu al perot ha'ilan. Shehein matirin lahavi Bikurim. Shehein uvin Bikurim kodem la'atzeret. Dichtiv Bikurei ketzir chitim. So one answer is that they do bring favor regarding the perot ha'ilan because they permit, they open the door to the bringing of Bikurim till the time of the bringing of the Korban Shtei uh on uh, uh, Shavuot, you can't bring Bikurim. So they wait for the Korban to be brought, then they can bring the Bikurim. So it's Matirat, so it's an act of Ritzui. It's a nice answer, um, but it leaves maybe Rashi too with a little bit of like, mm. so look at the second answer. Fascinating. Vani Shamati, Rabbi Yehuda Latame. I heard that Rabbi Yehuda follows his exact approach. The Ha'azla command to Amrabit Sanhedrin, Dav Ayn Abibet, Eight Sha'achal Adam Harishon, Chita Haita. There are a number of opinions of the Gemara what it, the fruit was that Adam Harishon, Chaba Em Kochai, ate. And one of them is he ate wheat. That was the eights. You see, it's called the pre. And you see, he's trying to, uh, to fix it. So that's what he did. There's a massive piece of dr drush here that I hit upon when I was going through this Gemara. I found this Rashi. But we're here for Gemara, so I'm not going to talk to you about it right now. But it opened when I saw this Rashi, I, I remembered it. I was like, wow, yeah, this is an unbelievable thing. But Adam and Chava and the uh, and the Shtei Alechem. And you'd say the kids. I'll leave it yes. for now. You have to come to the drushes, not this Shabbos. It'll be in Shavuot. I got to write it down though, because I have it like notes already in my head. But what? It's yeah, it means a tree. Rabbi Yehuda thinks it's wheat. Why does he think it's wheat? He got it from uh, his Rebbe. He got it from generations. He had a posse. I, I love that. Yecholiot? Yecholiot, that it came from a tree back in the day and it changed. And after Ghanaian. Okay, after Ghanaian, yeah. Yecholiot? Then, because yeah, we didn't have to work for... <clears throat> yeah, right, right, right. So everything, right. Had to work right, the planting, yeah. Therefore, they don't want to make it easy just to pull. Yeah, that's why you have also the, the messianic vision that be gluskaot, the, the loaves will be growing on the trees, which is a mystical idea. It's hard to understand what does that mean. But if it's a harking back to how it wasn't gone, Aden, again, Hashem is a koya chol, do whatever he wants. Yeah. So, so whatever it'll be, it'll be, we'll see. But I have a whole piece of drush about this from the Adam and Chava and the Shtei Alechem. I won't do it now. Okay, moving right along. I have to remind myself when I get home to scroll down all the notes before I forget them. Four lines up from the bottom. Amarabi Abo. Lama token b'shof for shal Yeah? So why, why do we blow the shofar of a ram? Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu tiku l'fana b'shof for shal ayel k'deh she'ezkor l'chem ha'kedat Yitzchak ben Abraham u'mal in yalechem ki l'kadatim atzachem l'fanai. If you'll do that, it's as if you bound yourselves before me Total submission, sacrifice, self-sacrifice, etc., as Yitzhak ben Avraham was prepared to do. And the symbol of it is the ayah, the shofar shal ayah. Then the Gemara asks uh, Rabbi it's, uh, Amar, it's not Vyama, but Amar Rabbi, Rabbi Yitzhak, Lama token Rosh Hashanah. Why do we blow the shofar Rosh Hashanah? Asks the Gemara, Lama token, 
Rachmana Amar Tiku. The Torah says to pull the shofar. What do you mean, why? Ella Lama Marian. No, he said, but I really meant to say is, why do we have the sound of the trua? The Gemara says, Marian Rachmana Amar. It says so in the Torah. Zichron trua. It says so. Yeah? So there you have it. So Ella, rather no. What did Rabbi Yitzchak really mean? Lama token of Marian Shen Yoshvin. The token of Marian Keshehein Omdin. Why do you blow the shofar when we're seated? Why do you blow the shofar when we're standing? Seated means not in the Amida. We really stand. That's our minute, but call me Yusuf because before the Amida. Yeah. And then we do it during the Amida for us, Chazar Shatz, and the Spark, and the Sachidot Mizrach in the middle of the Amida uh, itself when everyone's saying the Amida. So why? In order to mix up the Satan, the Satan should be confused uh, uh, year over year by this. Rashi, Shleyastin. When the Satan sees that uh, the Jewish people are uh, so uh, enraptured by their mitzvot, they're sitting and they're blowing, they're standing and they're blowing, the, the, the Satan has nothing to say. The Satan run, has, no, has no words. It can't speak. Yeah? So, and therefore we have the, the, the idea, right, that as we're reading the Psukim, that's not a halacha, that's a minuk, that we read, right, Koli Shamata, uh, 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 Avdecha, all those psukim kira satan, right? So that's because the irbuf satan is happening right then and there. Yeah. So I could see two perfect Jews. One Jew who imagines in their mind there's a a, a, a creature. It's not physical, of course. It's a satan. There's a a, 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 a certain a courtroom in Shemayim, and uh, it's good to imagine things. So imagine there's a satan. The son's a prosecution. It probably wears a nice uh, suit. Uh, uh, maybe he has one of those wigs on or something. It's prosecuted, but he sees the down below the, how the blowing is over. Sutton says um, the prosecution. It doesn't have a word. That's it. Finished. Yeah. So I could see that happening, and the reason is because the I would say the theurgic power of this of the the the, the, the feel of nature of what's going on. Even the Sutton doesn't have a word because we we outsmarted the Sutton. It mixes up and confuses the Sutton. I could see a perfect Jew who explains and understands it that way. No problem. I could see another Jew who understands that the Satan is the element that is planted within every individual, like Rachel Lakish says, the Satan is the Sahara that is so cynical that actually there could be Rachamim on the Yom Hadin. But when the Satan looks around and sees the Jews in the shul who really care and who get the memo when they hear the sound of the shofar, it pierces that individual who has a Satan within them and they realize there is Rachamim, and there is Din. Now, when the the, 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 the the coin drops, the penny drops, and they get it, that's the Ma'arbi Veda Satan. So how do we Ma'arbi the Satan? I believe a show for when I'm seated. I believe a show for when I'm standing. I believe a show for this way. I believe a show for that way. And the Satan, if you will, cannot prosecute anymore because he realizes, oh, wait a minute, there is a case for the defense, and this is how we make it. We, God gave us a mitzvah. We build a shofar. We daven properly, sincerely. That's by the by, it's embedded in the tefillah, embedded in the tefillah. It's not standalone. The standalone, by the by, seems to be the add on. Again, Ayn Sham, the Balamor, is a big arichas on this, that really, really, it's meant to be as part of it meshed in the Amida. This part we're doing before, that part we're doing after, I'm not saying it's not halachic, I'm just saying the core seems to be really in the middle of the Amida. So when you think of it that way, it's like, what am I going to do to augment my tefillah to make it more sincere, to realize this is for real? I'm going to sound the air raid siren, if you will. Yeah, the, the azaka. But the azaka is not an azaka of, of, of panic. It's the azaka, wake up. You know, like the Rambam writes of Chuba. It's possible to change this, this deen, whatever it is. But if we dive in the right way. Again, two perfect Jews. I'm not suggesting that one looks at the other and says you're you're a fool or you're a heretic. I get, it, I know that, but but that's that's again bombast. I think there's room for both of those uh, for Klal Yisrael and um, uh, uh, more, more to say. We will have to get to um, get to toast for it next week. So ask the all important question: What about Bal Tosif? So we'll have to see that. We'll open with that. God willing, next week. Ad Khan for today. We'll see you next week. God willing. Lila